what is up you guys it's me Vanille. um so for my first video i wanted to do a contest entry um my friend tavis who does vinyl talk with tavis i'll put him in the description below he is doing a valentine's day contest and valentine's day i'm alone so but it's nothing new realistically like you know what i mean like we just kind of like for single people like me valentine's day is just eating chocolate ordering food <laughs> initially my first video was gonna be like a tag all about me but let me be real with you guys there's nothing interesting about me okay i'm probably the most boring person in this whole entire world so i, I just decided to skip that and um well, why am i going off track okay anyways so he's doing a valentine's day contest in which people talk about at least five of their favorite love songs now for me this is hard <laughs> because like i'm not I don't pick my songs like that. I don't rank them. That's the problem. So I just tried my best and picked 20 songs that I consider like my love songs or like my songs for Valentine's Day or in that theme, you know what I mean? Like just going along with Tavis. Um, I will put his channel in the description. Please check him out. He does a lot of like vinyl videos and stuff and it's really great. So let's get started. But before I do, like, subscribe and comment. Why did I say it like that? Okay, let's just let's just let's just start okay okay so the first song that i would pick is mariah carey's the roof i have this is like the first cop thing that i bought i bought the cd single first and then i bought the butterfly roof i really 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 love the roof it's just like it's different from the conventional love song you know what i mean it's not like it, it's words can't describe it I, just, I guess like the way that mariah carey writes her lyrics it's like i guess people still don't know that like she's well known for, as a songwriter as well as a singer like i don't know if like you guys saw it on her instagram she posted this video after she got like a songwriting award that like someone comp like compiled a bunch of her videos saying that i'm a songwriter and like she was trying to state it each time and like now people finally recognize that but i've always recognized that about mariah carey like for i think when i first started listening to her i knew that like certain words that were in the lyrics were like like no shade but like they were like coming from a different place you know what i mean um but yeah i remember hearing the roof and i was just like what kind of song is this and like for me i think it's like one of the most underrated songs ever like I, this song was not released in a, in america it was only released in like europe and uk and it wasn't it wasn't received everywhere but i know that the remix featuring mob deep was released in the states um people slept on this song i'm not i'm not gonna lie like it's a really great song like the mob deep sample the lyrics Corey rooney uh executive produced this song as well and it's just it takes you into like like i don't know if you guys have seen the video either but it just takes you in a little time warp and like from reading like the meaning of Mariah Carey, like again in that book, like I okay, here's the thing. I bought I have the book. I listened to the audiobook because the audiobook is actually way better than the book itself. If, if you guys have not listened to the audiobook, do yourself a favor and read it. Um or listen to it, sorry. <laughs> um, but it's just like she tells the story about like how the roof was conceptualized during the rate the recording of the butterfly album. And like, you know, just like now that I like read the lyrics, it was like there's more meaning attached to it, like like what part, like what do I really like? Um, I can't even remember what I was reading. Last night that I, last night I dreamed that I whispered the words I love you and that I touched you so very subtly as we were kissing goodbye. Like, just, and then like, of course the chorus, every time I feel the need, I envision you caressing me and go back in time to relive the splendor of you and I on the rooftop of that rainy night. Like, Mariah Carey, done did it you know what i mean like everything from the lyrics to the beat to the sample to the way that the vocals were arranged it's just, i believe that this is like one of mariah's like best efforts why am i like this is a struggle i'm sorry but i believe this is one of the best Mar one of mariah's best this is one of best one of mariah's best so and i'm like starting a lot i'm sorry insert that clip of spongebob where like he starts mixing up his words well it's just that i'm feeling sort of <laughs> But anyways, next one. <laughs> so the next one I have is Debla Morgan, I Love You. Now, what can I say about Debla Morgan, especially this song? Debla Morgan is like, she's literally 
I don't want to say like she's another Mariah Carey because she's realistically not but she can belt like Mariah Carey you know what I mean like she was inspired by the whole thing and I remember when I heard this song it gave me Mariah Carey energy but like it was something different that I heard you know what I mean like it went from like a regular pop song and then she recites poetry as like the verses which is really cool and of course the video if you have not seen the video it's one of my favorite videos i think like even though there's no set specific theme it's just like it's it's a pop video and i think like it represents the 90s in a way like the style and the aesthetic um but just i love you and it, it always makes me smile when i hear, hear this song this song never fails to just bring me up a little bit and you know i'm pretty sure a lot of people who know the song probably feel that same exact way but um I actually wanted to do a video on Devil Morgan and I probably will later on because there's a lot of history with her especially um but I Love You is one of the songs I consider like a Valentine's Day song so Devil Morgan I Love You check it out if you haven't so the next one I'm pretty sure is not a surprise for any R&B enthusiast <laughs> LSG My Body like <sighs> You can't do Valentine's Day without something. You can't do Valentine's Day without my body. I'm sorry. <laughs> just like even like when you say this, the words in your head, you'll just hear the song. You know what I mean? And like, I think it's a great representation for Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? People make love on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I shouldn't be talking about this. This feels really weird. Um. But like no, but I feel like this song is like totally like on a Valentine's Day playlist. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like it's a great song. And like honestly, I heard this song growing up so much. And okay, this is a little story I have now. So of course, because I heard the song growing up, like back in high school, I would listen to like the songs I grew up with mostly. So like it was this, Ashanti, everything else in between. So there was a phase where like I was just playing the song over and over and over and over on my headphones. And I had this on like my Sony Xperia phone back in the day. And my friend, she was like, I guess like she was like, she was looking at me grooving to the song. And she's like, what are you listening to? And um, she grabs my headphones and she's listening, I guess it was like on the chorus where it's like my body all over your body. And she's, <sighs> she didn't like, okay. I, she actually did something that I thought would never happen. She was like grooving to the song and she's like, it was a dirty song. Like, yes, it's about sex and stuff. And I'm like, okay, like, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, you know what I mean? It was just like, um, yeah, it's about the sex. And like, after I got around to this song, I got around to Tony Braxton's You're Making Me High. And yeah, she was just all about the sex songs after. So if you need someone to be a bad influence, I'm your boy. But like I said, LSG is just... You can't go wrong with LSG, especially my body on Valentine's Day. Just, it reeks of like 90s R&B love song. You know what I mean? So if you have not heard of it, please do. I'm pretty sure like you've heard of it. You know what I mean? You, you, if you're an R&B enthusiast, enthusiast, again, you cannot have heard this in your life. Like Gerald Levert, Key Sweat, Johnny Gill. Like look at these three. Look at them. Like this is the epitome of R&B music right here. LSG, My Body. So the next one that I have, I don't have a physical copy of it yet, but it's one of my personal favorites. Tamia featuring Eric Benet, Spend the Rest of My Life With You. Oh, what can I say about that song? It's one of my favorites, honestly. It's it, it's just, it's one of the best R&B songs I've read. I'm gonna keep saying that, I'm sorry. I just, there's just so many songs that I love and like, I'm pretty sure most of you can relate. It's just, it's hard, you know what I mean? Like, especially when you love all these songs. Um, but, Eric Benet and Tamia, they have this chemistry with each other when they perform. And I love, 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 love that song. Um, of course, Tamia killing it on vocals. Eric Benet killing it on vocals as well. Um, and the song pre did pretty well too. It actually was nominated for a Grammy Award. Um, it won a NAACP Image Award, I believe. Um, they performed it on the Beverly Hills Nano 210 finale. I think that's the show. I'm not sure. Um, and... Um, Eric Benet actually performed the song for Halle Berry at an award show when they were together and when you watch, like I'll put a little clip of it but when you watch it like Halle Berry is just like She 
she's an on like it's sad to watch because Eric Benet was not a good person I'm sorry <laughs> Eric Benet did some stuff while he was with Halle Berry you know what I mean but we're not gonna get into that it's about we'll, 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 we'll indulge in the heartbreak later but Eric Benet to me I spend the rest of my life with you it's one of the best songs ever if you have not heard of it do your ears a favor and check it out okay it is one of the best in my opinion from the lyrics to the beat to the harmonies to just just it's done it's everything that song's the best thing ever just listen to it okay the next one it's not really like a it's a sad song okay i gotta explain myself on this so i love sad songs so I, it's uh, that sounds pretty bad doesn't it <laughs> like any type of sad song or ballad i love ballads and i, I love soul music and i love sad music like it was so funny my friend sharisa she's like I guess we were watching Waiting. I was watching Waiting to Exhale with her for the first time because she's never seen it, but I've seen it multiple times. And we watched it, and like um, it was the part where Aretha Franklin's "It Hurts Like Hell" was playing. And of course, I know the whole soundtrack. Like, how could you not know the whole soundtrack? So I'm humming it, and she said, "Goes to me." She said, "You're really into soul music, huh?" And I'm like, "Like, <laughs> it was just like." girl i'm sorry like i just love soul music and i love sad music anything that grabs your soul like i will listen to i will vibe with i will relate with you know what i mean like is it, it soul music just grabs you especially when it's especially when it's aretha franklin like you can't tell me when you listen to aretha franklin you don't feel anything she's a voice you know what i mean rest in peace to aretha franklin she's a fucking voice like you can't you cannot okay like i'm already doing around but like I'm, I'm just yeah <laughs> and like again like she was saying like oh like you're really into like sad songs like I want I'm a, the upbeat I want to like dance and party and stuff and I'm like well I want to dance and party and stuff too but like life's about sadness which is really sad but yeah but like the song that I picked was as yet it's hard for me to say I'm sorry oh, just saying that it just gets me going you know what I mean it's I remember when I first heard it like I'm not really into the whole boys to men thing and and sync and backstreet boys like I, don't get me wrong i love them you know what i mean i like them and they're good music and it's just like i'm really into like girl groups so i'm like into total swv tlc and vogue you know what i mean like but when i heard as yet it's hard to say i'm sorry my heart just like my my heart just gravitated to a different world you know what i mean and it's even though like they didn't write the song themselves it was a sh it was initially done by chicago david foster produced the hell out of this record i'm telling you david foster did the damn thing like it's it's just one of the best songs ever like just even when they perform it like the album version of the song is an acapella so they just like snap their fingers and they sing it's one of the best songs ever in my opinion it just it's a change from like the boys to men and everything like that but i just love it because it's just about forgiveness and you know everybody needs a little time away you know like it's just just even just saying that first part everybody needs a little time away like it's just that cues up the song in my head but it's one of the best heartbreaking songs ever as yet hard for me to say i'm sorry check it out if you have never checked it out i urge you your ears will thank you hard to say i'm sorry <laughs> so this next song is probably not a surprise for some people that know me um janet jackson that's the way love goes here's for those of you who do not know i am a big 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 janet jackson fan i love janet and michael jackson i love them both they're like the epitome of music i just think like you know they've changed the game for music i'm sorry i will say that you know i'm pretty sure people disagree with me i know people don't like her because of the whole super bowl thing well you know what grow the fuck up they don't like michael jackson all that shit was a lie you know what i mean it like you, you have to be dumb to support all that kind of stuff about michael but anyways it's not about michael but it's just janet jackson is known for her r&b songs especially this one she's known for this song this was like one of the best songs and it it still remains one of her like ultimate favorites you know what i mean um just it's one of those songs that like it has a hit like a hard hip-hop groove 
but it has this R&B mellowness to it, which is really great. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and Janet Jackson, they always make the best duo ever. Like, I, it's just, you know, like it's just inevitable. They have to get together. They have to make music. They have to make it number one. You know what I mean? Um, but just when you hear that song, especially when the intro comes on, it's like, you know what's about to go down. And honestly, you would have to be dumb if you have not heard That's The Way Love Goes. You would have to be living under a million gajillion rocks who have not heard the song. And if you have not, please go check it out. Janet Jackson, That's The Way Love Goes. So for my next one, I picked Tamiya, So Into You. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard So Into You, not like the Tamiya version. They've either heard the Childish Gambino version, or maybe they heard like the Fabulous featuring Tamiya version or the Fabulous and Ashanti version, whatever your kink is. <laughs> um, what can I say? It's just, when I first, I, I heard the song growing up, of course, like it was just one of those songs that's magical. Tim and Bob produced the song and it's just magical. The lyrics are beautiful. It samples Lionel Richie. Um, again, it's just a really beautiful song. Like when you hear it, it just, it's intimate, you know what I mean? It's just saying that you love someone and you're really into them and <sighs> yeah, it's just, like, see, just even just thinking about the song, like you just get the feels, you know what I mean? You can hear it in your head. You just know the lyrics of it. I, I personally love the Tamiya only version. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I just love Tamiya, you know what I mean? Like, and she's actually Canadian. So she's from, she was born in Ontario, Windsor, Ontario. So that's a plus for us Canadians. Shout out to Canadians, you know what I'm saying? But if you have not heard the original Tamiya version, please go and check it out. It is one of the best things ever. Your ears will thank you. And yeah, Tamiya, so into you. So the next one I have is Puff Johnson's Forevermore. I love Puff Johnson, I really do. Like, do you need proof of that? I'm pretty sure you need proof of it. You didn't ask for it, but I'm giving it to you. Bam, I have four copies of her one album, Miracle. Like, it's that insane, you know what I mean? Like, I love, 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 love Puff Johnson. Like, she is one of the best vocalists out there. I'm just trying to figure out the best one to show. And I'll show the Japanese one. Um, she's one of the best, honestly, ever. Um, but Forevermore, when I first heard the song, it was just, it was, it's a great song. It's a really beautiful song. Michael Narda Walden uh, co-produced and co-wrote the song. Um, and Puff Johnson's vocals, like, what can I say? This girl can belt, you know what I mean? She can sing, she can do all the notes, you know what I mean? Like, and she's, freaking hot if I'm not like lying you know what I mean like she's she has a Vanessa Williams quality to her be her beauty um she only had one album and she was slated to do another album but she had passed away due to cervical cervical cancer in 2013 rest in peace to Puff um I love Puff Johnson she's one of the best and I think Forevermore is just one of the best songs that I would think for Valentine's Day from the lyrics to the vocals to the beat itself the way that the strings are arranged the way that it's just the whole song in its entirety is just beautiful and yeah and like she's also known for another song on the miracle album called god sent you which a lot of people used in their weddings and it's just puff johnson and herself is just really beautiful so if you have not heard of her please check her out puff johnson forevermore on the album miracle and rest in peace to her so the next one that I have is one of my favorite songs ever. En Vogue, Don't Let Go, Love. Sorry, I just have to give myself a minute because that song just does wonders. Like as soon as you hear the guitar part and then Dawn going off on vocals, and oh, it's just a great love song. You know what I mean? It's one of the best ever. Um, organized Noise, Andrea Martin, Ivan Mateus, Marquis, like they, they did their thing on this song. This is what prompted En Vogue to kind of go back in the studio and record EV3, which was before then EV4 until Dawn left the group. But it's just one of their well-known songs. And especially if you watch the video with Mackay Pfeiffer in it, it's just ugh, one of the best songs ever. Like just the way that 
Andrew Martin and Ivan Mateus, they were known for like their song lyrics. So once this came out, of course, everyone wanted to work with them. Um, but what can I say? En Vogue, Don't Let Go Love. What's it gonna be? Cause I can't pretend. Don't you wanna be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go. Oh my God. I think this is one of the best songs for Valentine's Day too. En Vogue, Don't Let Go Love. I'll stop now. So for the next one, I don't have a physical copy of this, but um, it's a song that I've been listening to for the last three, four months now. Angela Wimbush, Treat You Right. Okay, like this is another favorite song of mine right now during this time. Angela Wimbush, what can I say? Like she's known to be one of the best vocals out there. Um, when I first heard this, I thought to myself, this is not an Angela Wimbush song because she's known for like her really contemporary, dull contemporary R&B slow jam type of records. And when you hear Treat You Right, it's like, it's a hip hop groove with the R&B tune with it. It's a hip sampled hip hop groove with the R&B essence to it, which is really beautiful. I love the song. Chucky Booker produced and wrote the song. And it's just, it's one of the best ones in my opinion. Treat You Right, especially the video, it just reeks love you know what i mean and if you have not heard of it just please listen to it angela wimbush treat you right i'm sorry if i'm like really bad at this i'm, I'm still learning how to do this whole youtube thing and realistically i've just been kind of tired of everything going on so so another one i just i feel like i had to pick this because it's valentine's day and i'm pretty sure i would get a lot of feedback if i didn't put this out there barry white Barry White is like the epitome of love, you know what I mean? Like I'm pretty sure if you look in the dictionary, you would see his face on it. I'm pretty sure of that. Barry White, I have to admit, when I first heard him, it was kind of different, you know what I mean? Because again, I didn't hear anything like that, especially when did I discover Barry White again? I want to say it was like grade 11, I was, grade 11. I can't remember the age, but grade 11, I know that I was listening to a lot of like Mary J. Blige and a lot of hip-hop so like obviously Barry White has been sampled in hip-hop many times I think Barry White is a genius you know what I mean Barry White has made a lot of money and I'm pretty sure he's made a lot of babies D just don't just just think about it I'm pretty sure everyone who's a Barry White fan knows that a baby was made every time his songs are playing um, <laughs> I think I'll try to be serious with that but yeah just I have to admit that um um just i think the song for me that does it is like love serenade of course and like all because of you heaven that's what you are just it, i it's hard to pick a very white song but heavenly that's what you are to me i think that's like the best so so that's the best song for valentine's day again if you have not heard this go and check it out the next one I have is Together We Can Make Such Sweet Music by The Spinners. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like I picked this up, I think about two years ago. I was actually in Langley, BC um, and I was in KPU doing a group project and um, I went to this record store that was nearby called Crazy Bob's Music Emporium. Um, if you're in Langley and if you need a good spot to look at records, go there he has like the best selection of 45s um 12 inches dvds cds anything he's and he's honestly one of the best people i've ever known and if you're watching hello bob um i was looking through the 45s and i kept seeing a lot of motown and like during that time i didn't have like an extensive knowledge of like all the artists on motown like of course i knew the like, majority of them but i never knew like the spinners like that unfortunately like I heard, I heard a couple songs, but I was never really into them like that. Um, but once I saw this on the on for sale, it was like less than a dollar, I believe. I bought it, and when I played it, it just it was such a heartwarming song. You know what I mean? It's like I think because I've been so used to like hearing stuff that was electronically made that this song just seemed a huge change for me. It was really organic. It just sounded proper. It sounded natural. The song was made in the 70s and during that time it was like a magical time in music you know what i mean and it wasn't so gussied up with like anything else it was just straight up from the heart and it just 
especially when it's Motown. When you hear a Motown song, you know it's it's real. So I just think that Together We Can Make Such Sweet Music is one of the best songs I've ever heard, um, especially for Valentine's Day occasion. You know what I mean? Like you can just play the song and it's just, it's, it's a great song. If you have not heard of it, check it out. The Spinners, Together We Can Make Such Sweet Music. And yeah. Okay, so the next song I have is Aaliyah, One in a Million. Yeah. Whew, Aaliyah, girl, we miss you on earth. I'll say that. Um, of course, I heard Aaliyah growing up from my sisters. Um, one in a Million is one of those songs I think is just, it's like the, it's just like, it's a mix of the perfect love song with like the hardest hip-hop R&B song and it's just like I think it's a great love song in my opinion it's just one of the best I think it's one of the best in Aaliyah's catalog especially because during this time that like, she had just been out of the whole R. Kelly thing she was coming out on her own and people were starting to know her more as an entertainer instead of just a singer um one in a million, I think, is just one of her best love songs. In my, like, I would consider that a love song. I would consider that a Valentine's Day song. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a great song. From the drum track to the lyrics to everything. Missy Elliott co-wrote the song, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great song. And like, while I'm talking about Aaliyah, I think the best time to put her music on streaming services is right now. I know people have been wanting this for so long on Apple Music and Spotify. And you know what? I know like there's a lot of controversy with it, with the whole black girl entertainment thing and Barry Hankerson type of biz, you know what I mean? Um, but I think for the fans and the younger generation, like my generation, the younger, we should have this on Spotify and Apple Music to educate people on Aaliyah because I think aging nothing but a number is kind of we've already listened to that you know what i mean and like like even though it's on youtube and like some people including me have the cd copy like this is my sisters growing up like i have all of their Aaliyah cds so i'm really thankful that i had this and i had the opportunity to rip it and put it on my computer and just back it up forever um but i think for the younger generation they kind of need someone like her so i would suggest that i know like they're trying but we need to figure out how we can get this stuff on Spotify and Apple Music and how we can get it reissued on vinyl because I would kill for a vinyl reissue of One in a Million and the self-titled album. Like, I've, I don't know if you guys have seen the price of One in a Million on vinyl. It's like over $300 and oh, we just broke. We don't have money. It's COVID. We don't have money. We're, we're, for, we're poor. Like, I don't have $300 to spend on an album. Like, like, I have trouble spending like five bucks on an album sometimes because I'm so used to buying it for like a dollar somewhere. But let's just pray that we get the we get the reissues or at least the albums on streaming services this year. So Aaliyah, one in a million, baby girl, we miss you. Rest in peace. One in a million. The next one I have is Mary J. Blige, All That I Can Say. I wish I had words to tell. Now what can I say about this song? Um it's a magical song, you know what I mean? It's it's different from all the other Mary J songs. Like during the time this album was being recorded, Mary J Blige was kind of changing her sound. Like she was going from like hip hop R&B to like R&B, somewhat neo soul kind of music. And she had enlisted a bunch of producers on this album, including Lauryn Hill, who I fucking love. I'm pretty sure most of you know this. I love Lauryn Hill. Like most of you that know me know I love Lauryn Hill. Um, she produced, wrote, and arranged the song for Mary J. Blige. And it's one of them, I think Lauryn Hill is just one of the best in production, you know what I mean? And like, when I first heard the song, it was just so heavenly and so beautiful. The lyrics were meaningful and it was just like, like for a Mary J. Blige song too, like it was just more, like it had that hip hop edge to it, but it still had a more R&B feel to it, which is really beautiful. And the video, honestly, too, is really great. Um, and like, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but like Mary J. Blige actually performed the song live with 
Lauren Hill on the Queen Latifah show back in 1999. And I remember when I first watched it, I was just like, even though like if you're at home watching it, I got hyped up. Like the studio audience in that show was like, I'll put a little clip of it. <laughs> It was one of the it's one of the best performances ever in my opinion of Mary J. Blige and Lauryn Hill. Like just I wish music was like that, you know what I mean? Like where women can come together and like not beef and I'm asking for a lot and I'm like ranting over nothing but Mary J. Blige, all that I can say. So the next one I have is Casey Grogan, Soul in Love. <laughs> Again, not that many people, like probably most of you have not heard of Casey Grogan. Um, I, again, I wanted to do a video about her. Like I wanted to do like a video about like artists like K Casey Grogan, Devil Morgan, Puff Johnson. I wanted to do a video on them, like just, but um, I'll give you a little context. Like she was signed in 93. She was like 16 years old, I believe when this album came out. It actually didn't come out in the States. It came out in Japan only. And that's usually the pattern with Sony Records is that if their album doesn't come on the States, it'll go to Japan and it's usually worth a lot of money. Like this one was a, a lot of money, but I'm not going to tell you how much it paid for it because that's not, that's not, that's not your business. <laughs> um, but Casey Girl Gets Soul in Love, I was just amazed by this debut album. And when I heard Soul in Love, it was such a change again, like, cause this album came out in 97. And when you hear So In Love, it doesn't sound like it came from the 90s. It sounds like a 70s soul record. And it's just really beautiful. And especially like the way that she brings herself as a performer at 16 years old, she's belting high notes and she's holding long notes and she's going for the high notes. And it's just like, Casey you're going for 16 year old. Like, you know, she came out at the time that like Aaliyah, Brandy, Monica had came out and did their thing. Um, it's such a shame that she never made it onto the scene. Like I know now she's doing a lot of stage plays. She appeared on the Greenleaf soundtrack. And um, yeah, like I just think Soul In Love is one of my favorite songs by Casey Brogan. And um, I urge everyone to check out this album. It's, I'm pretty sure the whole album is on YouTube. If not, the album is on SoundCloud with a couple of songs that didn't make the CD copy of the album. Um, and it was actually funny, I looked at the SoundCloud um, account for whoever uploaded this and Casey Grogan commented and she said that the song was actually her mom and dad's favorite song and that it just reminds her of like them and like being in love and everything and I just thought that was pretty cool. So again, when it comes to Valentine's Day, I think Soul in Love is one of the best songs ever. You can just dedicate that song to someone that you love and it's just the best represent, re best represent, it's the best representation of being so in love. <laughs> so, Casey Rogan, So In Love, from the album, What Girls Are Made Of. So the next song that I picked, I don't have a physical copy of this yet, but um, it's one of my favorites. Shantae Moore, Love's Taken Over. What can I say about that song? I love that song a lot. Um, it's a really great song. Um, the way that she sings is just it's heavenly i'm pretty sure that not that many people know shanti more like that but i love shanti more i think she's one of the best i've been listening to her a lot more recently um i don't know if you guys have like she there was this video on youtube i'll put a little thing of it where she's like on the piano with her musical director and she's just belting out whistle notes like it's nothing like things that makes Mariah carry a diva. Hello. <laughs> that's that's some iconic shit. You know what I mean? When you're just belting out whistle notes like it's nobody's business. Ugh. It's just especially when you hear it, it's just it gets your heart. But 
um, Love's Taking Over, I love the song a lot. It's The beat is actually my favorite part of the song. It was actually taken from a Soul to Soul record that Simon Law produced and he actually produced Love's Taking Over as well. Um, the lyrics are, are, are one of the best things ever in my opinion. Just it, I, that That's what grabs me and it's like the way that Shantae Moore sings it, like it it's like the album version and like there's, there's a Quiet Storm version of the song which is absolutely wonderful as well and I think that that's another record that like is the epitome of our 90s r and I think you know Shantae Moore is one of the most underrated people ever in my opinion and if you guys have never heard of her check her out Shantae Moore loves taking over so for the next one I don't have a physical copy of it but it's one of my favorite songs it's a cover um Donald Jones knocks me off my feet I don't know when I heard the song it was just like it again it's a magical R&B love song you know what I mean like especially the video the video just makes the song even better um the song was initially done by Stevie Wonder for one of his albums I can't remember off the top of my head which one but it's honestly just one of the best songs in my opinion I, it's just I think it's a song that like anyone can just dedicate to someone you know what I mean like it knocks me off my feet it makes me weak it knocks me off my feet like this <sighs> Donnell Jones, you know, one of the best out there, in my opinion. Um, and especially, like, because he started from the bottom up. Like, he worked with, like, 702 and Usher before he became the Donald Jones. Like, he was working hard and making his own music. And then he was working for other people. Then he did his own music. So, I just think that was one of the best songs ever. Donald Jones, Knocks Me Off My Feet. If you haven't listened to it before, check it out. So the next one that I have is Billy Lauren's Happiness. Um, what can I say? This song, it just, it's a Valentine's Day song. It's just, it, I just think like it's one of the, my favorite songs. It just reminds me of my grandma and like, even though I never heard the song growing up, I found it I think like three or four years ago. Um, it just brought me back to like the good times of being young and being carefree, not being responsible for anything. You know what I mean? Um, but I just think the song is just one of the best. And like, I think for anyone that you love, you just automatically would think of this, think of them when you like listen to the song. And I think Billy Lawrence, like she's written this song, like she co-wrote the song and Billy Lawrence is one of the most talented writers ever in the music industry. Um, I just love the way that it's just really beautiful. You know what I mean? It has a symbolic meaning to me. So I, of course I'm going to be partial to the song and, I'm, and say I love it, but but yeah, the song means a lot to me. Um, I think in Valentine's Day, if you can play the song and just think of someone like, you came into my life when my world seems so unright. You walked inside my dreams. Dreaming to me is not reality. You are my precious one. You're my sunshine when it's raining. I want you to know all these things. Let me welcome you into my arms of happiness. I, I like even just saying those words, it just gets you feeling good. And I think this is like the best thing ever. And like, actually, one of my friends for my Christmas gift, she knew I loved the song and she got me this little Spotify plaque done. Um, and I don't know if you guys know like what this is, but like it's obviously a little thing that you can put up on your wall and it has a little Spotify code on the middle here and you can just scan it on your phone and the song plays. Um, and my friend knew that I loved the song a lot and she got it done for me. And yeah, I just think it's one of my favorite songs. So Billy Lawrence, Happiness. And again, I'll do another video on Billy Lawrence because she's another artist. It's a huge, 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 huge inspiration of mine. So Billy Lawrence, happiness. Love you. It's easy because you're beautiful. And making love with you. So I'm in the middle of editing my video and I totally forgot to include Shawnee's Loving You. 
I'm very sorry. I guess it's just like, cause it's a lot of songs that I picked. So I did guess my brain was just a little frazzled and I apologize, you know, if, for, anyone that, for anyone that's watching, like I know it's a long video, but I felt like five, again, five songs is really hard to pick. So I'm just going with like the songs that I could love, that I consider my Valentine's Day songs. And it's a lot. I'm sorry if you're not like intrigued, you know what I mean? But what am I talking about? If you're watching this this far, you're intrigued by like everything I picked. But what can I say about Shawnee's Loving You? I love this song a lot. Shawnee's is known for her vocals. She's just, you know what I mean? She's incredible. She's known for her song, I Love Your Smile. Um, but for me, I think like the key song that she's known for is Loving You. And of course, th there's another song that she does called Yesterday, but Loving You is like the main song that I really love that she does. And um, it's just a really beautiful song. Um, I love the song as well. And I'm pretty sure like a lot of R&B enthusiasts like myself love Shawnee's. Um, she's gifted, she's talented. She's been doing this whole music thing forever if it's, since she was little. Um, the way that she sings this, she, the way she sings this song is just really beautiful. Um, she has different arrangements when she performs it live. Um, there was one instance where she performs it at the Motown Live back in 1999, which is the performance I gave, I showed you guys earlier. Um, it's just honestly incredible, like the way that she just does the high notes and everything. And I know people try to put like Mariah Carey and Shawnice in like a little battle, and it's like they're both equally talented. You know what I mean? Like Shawnice, like I, she's totally underrated. You know what I mean? Like if you guys have never heard of Shawnice, check it out. But um, this song was initially done by Minnie Ripperton. Um, rest in peace to her. This was her song. Um, and Shawnice had done this song initially in 1991 for her Inner Child album. And it's become one of her well-known songs, I believe, besides I Love Your Smile. Like, everyone knows her for... Actually, some people know her for that kind of song, you know what I mean? And I think it's one of her best, in my opinion. If Minnie Riperton had heard the song, I'm pretty sure Minnie Riperton would have been proud of her rendition of it. So, I picked the song. And if you guys have never heard of Shawnee's, check her out. Um, I will include her in a playlist. But back to my editing, and I'm sorry if this is horrible. <laughs> um... And I'm sorry, this is long. Um, but the next song that I picked was Blue Raspberry, You're My Angel. I was actually um, watching a friend of mine's Instagram story, Brother Bradford. If you have not listened to his music before, check him out on Bandcamp. I'll put his uh, link in the description below. Um, he was po he posted on his Instagram story um, of him ripping a bunch of CDs that he had in his hometown. and. He actually had the song playing in the background and when I heard it, I said, oh my god, I have to know who this is. And he sent me the song and then I found it on Apple Music. And just let me tell you, that song is just, it, it hits the soul. I'll say that. It's, I think for an, it, like, because I never really heard anything like that in forever. Because I think I was just like really into, I think at the time that I discovered the song, I wasn't really into like, any music anymore like I was just into the audiobook the meaning Mariah Carey but I really kind of just got fed up with everything so I just kind of put my headphones in and that was it but when I heard you're my angel it kind of refreshed my ears a little bit and it just gave me a little bit of like a rebirth <laughs> I don't know if it's like the beat that gets you the sample the vocals just just that song when I first heard it it was just really beautiful and um I don't know if she's making any more music now, but um, it's one of the best and she is just incredible. I know she has a couple songs on iTunes, I believe, um, but please check her out. I will make a playlist of the, I, will, I think I'll make a playlist of these songs and just, just check it out if you guys like it. Um, but yeah, Blue Raspberry, You're My Angel. If you have not heard of it, check it out. One of the best songs ever. Okay, so my last song, it has to be another heartbreak. Anita Baker, I apologize. <sighs> what can I say about this song? I love Anita Baker. I think Anita Baker is gifted, talented, beautiful, everything. You know what I mean? Like when I heard, I think that was the first Anita Baker song I heard actually. And I apologize. I can't remember. I think it was. Um, but when I heard the song, it was just that song gets you. Like it was written by Gordon Chambers, actually, and Gordon Chambers is known to be one of the best songwriters. Um, just when you hear her say, like, Operator, get my baby on the line. Just the other night, we had a whole fight. Like, it was just... 
it's about like forgiveness and like it's just it's one of the best r&b songs ever and like it won a grammy back in 94 and it's just it's one of her best songs in my opinion i think that the song is like even though it's a heartbreak song it's just like i want my love back you know what i mean i apologize and like when she belts with the note in the middle of the, like in the bridge of the song it's just oh my god like yes anita baker we love you and yeah anita baker but i apologize if you have not heard the song please check it out i apologize if this video sucks <laughs> best segue ever okay you guys that is it um i hope i did good on this i'm sorry i'm still trying to learn this whole youtube thing i just think i need more practice with it thank you for being patient with me and um I'm gonna put a playlist actually in the description below of the songs that I mentioned because I feel like everyone needs to hear these songs and of course there's people that want to read these songs as well so yeah so happy Valentine's Day good luck to everyone else that's entered Tavis uh good luck watching this I'm sorry if I fucked up so many times um thank you for watching everyone else um like comment subscribe Look at my playlist on Spotify, Vin's Vibe. Um, I will be updating that very soon. So just check out the songs that are on there. And I don't know what else to say. What do I say? Um, Bye-bye. I don't know. Uh, goodbye. See you later. Hola. Wait, what? I want to say hello. I'm saying goodbye. Goodbye.